Okay, so this is a 2016 Kia Rio with a 1.6 liter GDI engine. Uh, it's their direct injection four cylinder. And I wanted to share my uh, thoughts on doing the timing set on this engine. Uh, there's not a tremendous amount of information out there for it. And uh, what I was really surprised by is the lack of aftermarket support for this. Um, as far as the timing components go, you know, I normally try to get good quality aftermarket parts in the most timely manner I can. But in this case, I, if you had the luxury of time, uh, try to get the parts from Kia before you do the job. Now, as far as uh, removing the timing cover and the uh, valve cover on the engine, nothing really too interesting there. Uh, it does have the high pressure fuel pump on top of the uh, valve cover, but uh, removing the valve cover was no big deal. Uh, the fuel pump I just kept bolted to the valve cover as I took it off. And the whole reason I'm doing this is I had a trouble code for, uh, and I wish I could recall the exact trouble code number, but pretty much the timing being too advanced on uh, the intake or exhaust side. I forgot which one it was. But so I've repl replaced uh, both camshaft phasers or variators. And as far as the timing marks on it, you can see they're marked here. Now I have the engine uh, turning it over by hand. Um, you can see I have the, uh, from a compression tester kit, a, a hose here. I have all the spark plugs removed too to make it easy to crank it over. But turning this so that uh, it's on the compression stroke on cylinder one and the timing marks, they lined up like this. So roughly the uh, one o'clock position, 11 o'clock position. Um, and then on the crankshaft, let me try to, there it is right there. You can see that's actually a drilled hole and that is a timing mark for it. Um, just for a point of reference, so it's roughly at the uh, four o'clock position and you can see um, that machine flat part of the crankshaft. That's where the harmonic balancer uh, slips over. But just for a point of reference, that um, timing mark on the crankshaft sprocket, it lines up with the bottom part of that flat. So that's something to consider. Uh, that uh, crankshaft sprocket is actually pressed, um, it's actually pressed onto the crankshaft. Um, it's not keyed to the crankshaft, which I'm not a big fan of, but that's how they uh, do it. Um, I'll show you on the new parts. <clears throat> So you can see here is from the new timing set, the uh, crankshaft sprocket. I've seen this on a few engines and I hate when they do this, but it's not key to the crankshaft. It's just simply a press fit. So my concern was, you know, cranking this thing over without the harmonic balancer pressing against that sprocket. I was wondering if the sprocket was going to freewheel on the crankshaft. But what I found out was is that it turns out it stays locked on the crankshaft, um, so it's got to be a press fit. In this case, there is almost no wear in that sprocket, so I'm not going to bother replacing it. But uh, certainly this must be uh, pulled off and then pressed on with a uh, tool for that. But So that's something to consider. Uh, just keep an eye on it as you're turning over the engine. And mind you, I'm turning over the engine with no spark plugs in it, so there's no resistance to uh, turning it over. But uh, I was weary of that, just keeping an eye on that sprocket, making sure it wasn't um, freewheeling on the uh, crankshaft, because that would definitely uh, make the job a little bit more difficult, quite a bit more difficult. Um, as far as, uh, so I picked up an aftermarket timing kit. Um, this was a matter of time, really, for me. I didn't have I don't have a Kia dealership nearby me and I called and checked on it and it would be at least two weeks out for the parts. So I couldn't wait around for that. Um, but on the aftermarket timing kit, the only thing, everything is exactly the same and good quality as far as I can tell, including the tension or everything. But on the, uh, towards the radiator side of the engine, this uh, um, guide for the chain, it doesn't have this hole cast into it. 
So whatever aftermarket company copied it off of the Kia part, maybe they must have chosen a uh, oddball example, maybe a one year only thing, whatever the case may be, but I cannot use this guide on this side. So I'm gonna have to reuse the original guide, but the original guy's in good shape and this is not the one that moves. This one stays fixed to the engine. Uh, this is the one that the uh, timing chain tensioner presses against. So this one's the one rocking back and forth. Um, timing chain and a tensioner were all exactly the same. Um, now, as far as parts go, the uh, timing cover is completely sealed up against the engine block with gray RTV. Um, so definitely, you definitely want to have a tube of RTV on hand. And uh, I was looking at timing cover gaskets kits and uh, I was really disappointed that none of them come with the O-rings for the oil pump. So I'll show you on the timing. Here's the timing cover itself. So I would say this is the side that faces towards the engine. Um, for what it's worth too, if you buy, if you go to the parts store and you order up an oil pump, it comes with the entire timing cover. And it's not terribly expensive. It's like $170, $180. But uh, so here's the oil pump on the timing cover. And you can see it, that's where it sucks it up from the uh, oil pan through the sump. And that's the output for the oil pump, pumping it right to the oil filter. Um, but the O-rings that seal here, uh, they're not included in any timing cover kit. So by all means, if you're getting this from Kia, uh, do your research and get these two O-rings for the oil pump. Uh, one here and one here. They're identical in size, so they should be the same part number. Um, oh yeah, and then very important too, if you're taking off the timing cover, let me try to flip it around here. <clears throat> okay, so there are dowel pins on the engine that fit right there and right there so but i looking at it carefully i could see that um they had these unused screw holes here so these are actually it's a place for an m6 screw or an m6 bolt to screw into and that's how you remove the timing cover so you run a, a good quality a six millimeter bolt through the threads there and that will lift the timing cover um, off the engine away from the dowel pins what you absolutely do not want to do is pry in this timing cover to pull it from the engine because there's a good chance you're going to break the casting. And the way it's RTV'd to the engine, it would take a considerable amount of force to do that. But most importantly, they purposely put these uh, uh, forcing screw holes right by the dowel pins to uh, help you, you know, pull up the pull the timing cover off the engine. So be sure to do that. Um, this car has 160,000 miles. There's absolutely no leaking on the uh, front crankshaft seal, but that's something to consider replacing while you're here. Um, also, probably a smart idea if it's the original water pump to buy a new water pump. At the very least, you want to get a gasket for it. So here is the old gasket. Looks something like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think what other points I could bring out to you. And I think that's pretty much it. So again, I'm uh, combating a, a, t a trouble code for the timing being too advanced or something to that effect. I, I forgot the, the exact number, but uh, looking at it, so I've already replaced, uh, before I even did this job, I replaced the uh, timing solenoids. There's one here and one here that I've got plugged off of the rag. Um, you know, that made had no effect on it. Uh, check the oil level, of course, right away. That's the most important thing. Um, but I really believe it's in these uh, camshaft variators. So I, I made it a point to buy these. Uh, the timing set, I was kind of disappointed that the uh, timing chain was actually um, exactly where it had to be, as far as I could tell. So it looked, it looked like it didn't jump a tooth or anything like that. But the uh, timing chain tensioner was definitely maxed out or close to being maxed out from the stretch and the timing chain. So, um, 
yeah, so hopefully maybe if you're dealing with the same issue, maybe that'll give you a feel for what you should be doing or what has to be done. But uh, yeah, so from Kia, I would recommend getting uh, both camshaft variators or phasers. Uh, companies word that different ways. There's a few different ways to say it, but get these two guys. Uh, get the timing chain. Get the ch timing chain uh, tensioner, which looks something like that. That's a new one. Um, new timing chain guides. There's only two of them. Pretty simple uh, timing set overall. Um, get the water pump. You can see that's the uh, where the water pump bolts to or goes through. Uh, new front crankshaft seal would be great. And most importantly to me are the two O-rings for the oil pump. And I'll show you. See. So right there, you can see I've already actually got a new O-ring installed. That's for that's the output from the oil pump going to the oil filter housing. And uh, right there, that is the pickup for the uh, sump and the oil pan. So definitely get those two O-rings, and you should be good to go. And I think that's pretty much. Oh, and then obviously get a new valve cover gasket too. But uh, yeah, so I hope that helps. Uh, again, for point of reference, I have the engine at top dead center on cylinder one, and those are the timing marks with the yellow markers. Uh, roughly the, the 1 and 11 o'clock position. You know, 1 o'clock on the intake camshaft, 11 o'clock on the exhaust. And then on the crankshaft, uh, 4 o'clock, right at the bottom of the machine flat on the crankshaft. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope that uh, helps someone out who's uh, prepping for the job or getting ready to do it. Um, yeah, that's how it goes. Let me put this thing back together and uh, um, show you it up and running. Okay, before I show the engine running, I want to show uh, how it looks with the timing chain installed. So you can see on the aftermarket chain, it's got painted markers here. Um, this was the case even with a factory chain. You could just, you could faintly see the uh, the colored uh, links. So that helped for me to determine if uh, the timing cha chain had jumped uh, teeth. But you can see uh, here's intake sprocket, uh, exhaust sprocket, and down low. There it is on the uh, crankshaft sprocket. Again, four o'clock position roughly. Uh, you'll notice too that harmonic balancer uh, locating pin is at the 12 o'clock position. And then one other thing I wanted to mention too was uh, the dowel pins that I was talking about earlier. Um, they are right here. So there's one. There's the one dowel pin and you can just faintly see the mark where the uh, six millimeter bolt was pressing against the engine to uh, remove the uh, timing cover. So definitely you have to use those bolt holes to your advantage to pull the timing cover off the engine. So there's one dowel pin and the other one right here just below the uh, tensioner. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, on this aftermarket timing set, I hate that this guide right here, the other one doesn't match up. It looks, it's identical except for this pin right, this hole right here for a dowel that's pressed into the engine block. Uh, maybe if I really felt the need, I could pull that dowel pin from the block and use that guide, but I don't really see the need. Uh, this original guide's in pretty damn good shape, so I'm gonna reuse that. Um, the tensioner side guide was exactly the same as the Kia one, so I'm gonna use that. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I started with the chain. Uh, I lined it up on the crankshaft sprocket, ran it around the intake. Um, then I installed this uh, front guide, uh, lined it up on the exhaust sprocket using uh, these are 14 millimeter hexes on here. Used a wrench or a socket to turn that. And then once I put tension on that side, then I installed this rear guide and rear tensioner, and that was pretty easy. 
And like on most any other engine that you're doing the timing set on, there's a pin that you pull out of the tensioner. And you only do that when you're ready uh, for it to press against the uh, tensioner guide. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me put this thing back together and show this thing running. Well, I got the Kia up and running. Um, I think for sure this engine was ran low on oil and I think the valve train is suffering for it a little bit. But uh, bottom line, doing that timing set and replacing those camshaft phasers, um, I was able to get rid of that trouble code for, uh, and I wish, <laughs> I still don't remember the code, but I think it was the ignition, uh, too advanced on the intake bank or whatever it might have been. But uh, took it out for a long test drive, no trouble codes at all, runs great. Uh, before, when, even to get, taking it out on the road, I mean, it would go into limp mode within, uh, God, within a couple hundred feet. But uh, runs good now, runs as good as it can. Uh, again, this engine was ran low on oil, and I don't think it's in the best of health, but it's doing okay though. But uh, overall, very happy with how the, uh, the timing job came out on this. But uh, I hope those little details is helpful to someone who's uh, tackling this engine. Uh, again, this is a 2016 Kia Rio, and it's a 1.6 liter uh, GDI or direct injection engine.